wonderful, sweet presence with us here this morning. Thank you, Lord, for gracing us with your presence. And we are so privileged, we're so blessed, Lord, to be able to stand here before you, Lord, to worship you and to experience you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right, good morning, church. We're having worship weekend, and that means we're going to have an extended time of worship. And it also means that there's not going to be any sermon. <laughs> so what am I doing here? Well, I'm here to prepare ourselves, right, to get ourselves ready for the time of worship that we're going to continue. But before we do that, can I just invite every one of you to just take a seat? So I'm going to share with you a short passage from the book of Isaiah just to prepare ourselves for what's to come next this morning. And if you realise there are no words on the screen today, and it's going to be like that, okay? Because I believe this morning, we want to worship God not just from the screen. You know, we're so used to worshipping off the lyrics on screen. But we need to, more importantly, worship from our hearts. Amen? From the bottom of our hearts. So this morning, I, I, instead of just always looking at the screen, I want to invite all of us to learn how to tune in with our ears and to tune in to our hearts and, and to our senses as well. And so I decided not to have any slides so that you can listen and you can tune in. So I'm going to start by reading the passage in Isaiah for you. This is drawn from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Verses 1 to 8, and in this passage, we're going to learn some aspects about what it means to come into God's presence and to encounter Him. Now, in the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, with the train of His robe filling the temple. Seraphim were standing above Him, each having six wings, with two each covered His face, and with two each covered His feet, and with two each flew. And one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of armies. The whole earth is full of His glory. And the foundations of the thresholds trembled at the voice of Him who called out while the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe to me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your guilt is taken away, and atonement is made for your sins. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. Now, the theme for this year's Worship Weekend is Encountering God in Worship. This phrase, encountering God or having an encounter with God, is not new to us. And we often speak about this in the context of having a deep spiritual experience with the Lord, especially during worship and prayer. And many of us have had that experience. Think of Holy Spirit Night during church camp or during youth camp for the younger people. Think about the many prayer concerts that we have had. And this experience is often marked by a very real and sometimes tangible presence of God. And of course, we are often deeply ministered through that experience. Some of us may even hear from the Lord. We hear from the Lord words of assurance, encouragement, and sometimes even direction for the situations that we are in. An encounter with God demonstrates His realness. Notice I use the word realness here and not reality. Because reality is something that we process with our minds. It's a cognitive concept. But realness is something that we feel and we experience. God is not just a concept. God is a real person. 
And so, an encounter with the Lord refreshes us. It re-energizes us. And of course, it transforms us. And it is an experience that will anchor our faith deeper and strengthen our walk with Him. So this morning, we want to have an encounter with the Lord through our worship. We want God's presence to fill this entire auditorium. In fact, His presence is already here. I'm sure many of you sensed it. And as we sing, as we worship, as we praise Him, we want to receive a special touch. Each one of us, we need a special touch from the Lord this morning. We want to meet God. We want to meet Him in the circumstances that we are in, in the situations that we are in right now. But before we do that, we need to prepare. We need to first prepare our minds by bringing our minds into focus. Because many of us, when we walk into the auditorium this morning, our minds are still cluttered. Cluttered with the many things that have gone on through the week. Some good, some not so good. Some may have had a rough and challenging time at work. And you're all stressed out. Some, those of you who are more fortunate, you may have had a wonderful week. You know, and you're still thinking about all the fun stuff that you had done. And maybe you're even thinking about what you're going to do after, after service today. You know, where to go for lunch or your shopping or, 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 or whatever entertainment that you have planned for yourself. Now, these are all distractions that we need to just put aside for now, for this morning as we worship. Because worship requires focus. We also need to prepare our hearts. Some of us are feeling tired. You're feeling weary this morning, whether physically or mentally. You may be stressed out, burned out, or both. Some of us may have may be bogged down even right now with worry, with stress. Could be something that challenging that is going on in your lives right now. And you just don't feel like it. You just don't feel like worshipping God. Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I think many of us need to come before the Lord to have a real good rest this morning. Amen. So let's come. Let's come this morning and rest in the presence of God. Let's lay our burdens down before Him. And some of us need to learn how to do that. You know, how to surrender your worries, your concerns, your fear at the feet of Jesus. In the passage that I read from you from Isaiah 6, the prophet Isaiah's encounter with the Lord was a very vivid one. The prophet Isaiah came into the presence of the Lord. He saw God on the throne. And his reaction and how he responded and how God subsequently touched him and transformed him. That was what the passage showed us. And in that very moment, Isaiah was called and commissioned as a prophet to Israel. Isaiah's account provides us with a biblical model or an example of what having an encounter with God is all about. And this morning, I want to share with you three aspects of Isaiah's encounter that we can learn from to guide us as we encounter God this morning, as we come into His presence. The first one is this, Isaiah's amazement at the awesomeness and holiness of God. When the, when the prophet Isaiah saw the Lord and when he was in His presence, how he must have felt. The second point is Isaiah's realization of his own sinful conditions. His response and his reaction when he was in the presence of the Lord. And finally, the third point, I want to talk about how Isaiah, after having received a touch from the Lord, was transformed. So let's talk about the first point now. Isaiah's amazement at awesomeness and holiness of God. Now imagine how the prophet Isaiah must have felt in verses 1 to 3, eh? when he saw God seated on the throne. And then you see the seraphims around the Lord. He experienced his, God's holiness firsthand. And he witnessed God's glory firsthand. Imagine how awestruck he must have been. 
Imagine how he must have felt when the foundations trembled. You know, when the seraphims proclaimed the holiness of the Lord and the smoke began to fill the temple. The passage tells us. Now, I know it may be a bit difficult for us to imagine that here this morning. We're all seated in this very comfortable auditorium. But I think there's a truth that we need to grasp this morning and that is this, that spiritually, in the spiritual realm, we are entering into God's throne room, entering into His presence. We may not be able to see it like the prophet Isaiah. We may not be able to feel how He must have felt. But the truth and the reality this morning is spiritually, God is on the throne. God is seated on the throne. Amen. Maybe some of us are even feeling exactly the opposite. You, you, you don't feel that God is in control, but God is. He's on the throne. And that's the first step that we need to take to, in the preparation to worship Him and to encounter Him in worship. Being aware that we are in the presence of God. Being aware that spiritually we are in His throne room. Being aware that God is seated on the throne. And that awareness brings about a response, brings about a posture that we must adopt. And that is the posture of reverence. As we come into God's presence, our hearts filled with reverence for Him. I've never been inside a real throne room. But I'm in a courtroom most of the time during my work. And anyone who enters a courtroom is expected to observe the court decorum and to behave in a certain manner that is respectful to the authority of the court. And I believe it's the same for God's throne room. You don't just saunter in, you don't just walk in and, you know, chit-chatting with your friends and all that. No. When you enter into God's throne room, you enter with reverence, you enter with respect. Because God is on the throne. Amen. So this morning, I think that's the first step that we need to do. Right? To enter into God's presence with that posture of reverence in our hearts. And at this point, I also want to just invite you all to just imagine. Eh? Imagine with me that God is seated on the throne. This glorious throne. Imagine the seraphims, the angels around. Imagine even the smoke. And imagine how, how wonderful that place must, must be. Let's just let's ponder upon that. See, God, God is a wonderful God. God is a great God. He's, he's the creator of the universe. Think about that. God is the creator of the universe. He's the Alpha, He's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. You know, we, we, we read about this in the Bible. We sometimes even just rattle it off our lips. But do we fully understand and appreciate what it means to be worshiping a God, worshiping a God who is like that? A God who is the King of Kings. A God who is the Lord of Lords. And this powerful, all-powerful God, omnipotent God, is also at the same time our Father. A father who loves us beyond what we can comprehend. A father who knows us intimately. Each one of you, he knows you inside, outside. He knows the situation that you are in. He knows what you are going through. That's our father. And he is also our father whom we love dearly. Amen. That's why we are here. That's why we're serving him. That's why we're living our lives in commitment to him. Because we love our Father. And, and our Father this morning is seated on the throne. He's seated on the throne. And He's an awesome God. So let's just attune our hearts to that. That now we're in the presence of an awesome God seated on His throne. And at the same time, He's a Father who loves us, who loves us deeply. Now the second aspect of the prophet Isaiah's encounter with the Lord was his realization of his own sinful condition. When Isaiah came into God's presence, what was his reaction? Straight away he cried out, Woe to me! For I'm ruined! Because I'm a man of unclean lips, 
and I live among a people of unclean lips, he immediately realized the condition that he was in. You see, it's impossible to come into God's presence and not be conscious of our own sinful condition. And I don't mean here in a condemning way. I, I don't mean, I'm not saying this in a condemnatory way. I'm not talking about coming before Him and feeling condemned. No, it's not about that. In fact, I'm not even talking about moral sins here. Because sin is much more than that. Sin is basically rebellion against God. And I know the word rebellion is a very big word, but at its basic level, it's really knowing what God wants us to do and yet we chose to go our own way, isn't it? That is sin. And sin is not only just disobedience to God, it is also excluding God from our lives. Have we been living according to our wills, our desires, our ambitions for the past week? Have we been so busy living our lives that we have shut God out completely, whether we intended to do so or not? God is seated on His throne, in His throne room this morning, but is He seated on the throne in your hearts? I think that's a question that we need to need to ask ourselves honestly this morning because that's an important part of preparing our hearts to come into God's presence. So at this point, I want to invite all of you to come before the Lord in total transparency and in contrition. Let's come before Him and let's be truly ourselves and let's humble our hearts before Him. Let's acknowledge our sinfulness. Let's acknowledge our disobedience. Let's acknowledge those areas in our life where we have shut God out. And this is the time to be completely honest, to be totally vulnerable before the Lord because there's nothing to hide. And there's nothing we can hide. Amen. Amen. So at this moment, I want to invite everyone to just close your eyes and just have a personal, private moment with the Lord now. Open our hearts to Him. Speak to Him. Tell Him. Tell Him about your situations. But more importantly, come before Him and acknowledge that you need Him and allow God to speak to you as well. So as all eyes are closed, let's just have this moment of private personal transaction with the Lord. may I invite everyone to open your eyes at this point as we go through the third and final point verse 6 to 7 of Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 6 tells us that as, I, as Isaiah realised his own condition and as he responded in contrition and humility one of the seraphims touched him with a coal on the lips and the seraphim told Isaiah that his guilt has been taken away 
and his sins atoned for. Today, we as the New Testament believers enjoy this privilege of salvation that Jesus has given to us. His death on the cross and his resurrection has made atonement for our sins and our guilt, likewise, has been taken away, just as how it was taken away from the prophet Isaiah. And we are now reconciled with God. We all know that. But more importantly, that reconciliation has brought us audience with the Lord. We are now able to come before Him. Do you know that not anyone can just walk into a king's throne room, for example. He needs to be granted authority, permission to do so. And this morning, we have that permission. We have that authority. We have been given audience with the Lord. Not just to appear, not just to come into His presence, but also to commune with Him. We are now able to worship God in His throne room, both individually and corporately as a body of Christ. And we're now able to adore Him, to express our love to Him, to sing to Him, to praise Him with our lips. And so this morning as we do that, I want all of us to do so with the heart of expectancy. Let's expect the Lord to touch us. Amen. Let's expect that God will touch us in our own special way. Each one of us needs a touch from the Lord and it's different from the one next to you. In whatever situations that you're in, in whatever circumstances that you're in, God is going to touch you this morning. Let's expect that. Let's believe that. And it's a touch that's going to refresh you. It's, there's touch, it's a touch that's going to re-energize you. It's a touch that's going to change you and transform you. And we read from the passage that after having received a touch from the Lord, there was change in the prophet Isaiah. When the, when the Lord asked, Whom shall I send? Who will go for us? Isaiah responded emphatically, Here am I, send me. You see, interestingly, before that, he was feeling totally unworthy. He was feeling unworthy to, be, to even be in the Lord's presence. Woe to me, I'm a sinful man. But yet, that touch, that touch on his lips, transformed him totally. And now, he was a changed man. He's ready now. He's ready to respond to God's call. He was ready to receive his commission to be God's prophet to the nation of Israel. So this morning, as we encounter the Lord, I believe we are going to experience that same change and that same transformation as well. Those of us who are feeling jaded, tired, weary, I believe we're going to be refreshed. Those of us who are feeling defeated, overwhelmed, we are going to rise up, amen. We are going to rise up in faith to claim God's victory over our situations and over our circumstances. Those of us who are fearful, who are worried, I believe God is going to change our situation, amen. And I believe we are going to experience God's supernatural peace as we worship Him. As we open our hearts to Him, God is going to begin to do a work. Some of us need deep heart surgery this morning. I believe that is going to happen. Because I believe this morning as we worship the Lord, God is going to draw us near to Him. He's going to lead us deeper into His presence, into His love. And as we go through that experience, we're going to experience a renewal. Not just a refreshing of our hearts, but a renewal in our love for Him, in our commitment to Him. I believe with all my heart, this is what is going to happen this morning. The question is, do you believe as well? So at this point, I'm going to invite every one of you to rise to your feet again. And let's get ready. Let's get ready to worship the Lord and let's get ready to encounter Him. Amen.